Hello everyone. Today, I want to take you on an adventure through space and time to a location known as the Lagoon Nebula, also M8. This beautiful tropical getaway is located in the constellation Sagittarius and is roughly 4,000 light years away. Luckily, I have just what we need to get a closer look. So stick around and let's check out the Lagoon Nebula. And um, I guess I should tell you that I did take this uh, with a Celestron 11 inch Rasa. I also used a ZWO uh, 2600 mm Pro uh, camera along with uh, Optilong's SHO filter set. Uh, and I do believe they are three nanometer filter set. Uh, it came with uh, HA, O3, and S2. All right, so first one we're gonna look at is the hydrogen alpha. Um, here it is, let's do a quick little screen stretch. And um, this was taken from my front yard. Um, uh, we only have, it was kind of late in the season, uh, when I call season uh, for my front yard. Um, uh, we have trees and of course the house and then where, where this particular object is in the night sky, when it gets dark enough, there's only a little bit of uh, sky time there before uh, we run into the trees. So we got about a hour and 20 minutes, <clears throat> hour and a half, I think, on these images, uh, on each of the three. And this is the hydrogen alpha. And it's not too bad. Um, it was a ZWO 2600mm Pro. Um, and it did very well. It's, it pairs very well with the uh, Celestron 11-inch Rasa. Um, uh, the mount that we used uh, was the Ioptron CEM70G, and it's mounted on my cart. I made a little cart uh, with some wheels, and I just kind of towed that around the yard uh, as needed to capture these images. All right, so let's uh, check out the hydrogen alpha here. Um, here it is uh, with just a screen stretch on it. So we're going to do a couple of uh, a couple of items here about a non-step process. I didn't make these steps up. I did, however, take other people's processes, pick and choose from what they needed and what they what they have and what I needed, and kind of made them into my own. Um, and I'm still still new to PixInsight, still new to these processes, and I'm still learning them. So just bear with me as we go through this. <clears throat> a lot of these um, processes that we're going to be used tonight to to go through this is the SETI Astro uh, scripts. So uh, first one we're going to do is we're going to use the automatic background from SETI Astro. So we'll do that. Um, for, for this purposes, we're just going to use uh, the, standard, um, uh, the standard settings and just go with what they have. But feel free to download their script and try them out for yourself because you can manipulate the data pretty well. All right, so it removed the background. This is the background that it removed. And this is our new image of the hydrogen alpha. And let's take a look here. And we can see that it did very well in this region here. There's a lot more dark area in the sky here, and it's more even all the way across. Whereas over here, there's a lot of gray area. There's a lot of gradient throughout that image. So it did very well. All right, we don't need this one anymore. So we tuck this HA data back over here. Let's do the same for oxygen three. This is what it looked like before. Oops, didn't mean to do that, it's all right. And go to the SETI Astro script, automatic DBE. And again, I just use, for right now, for the intents of this purposes of this demonstration, just gonna use the default settings. Um, all right, that went very well quickly here. Let's go. There's the background of the O3 that was removed. Here is the new image. And let's look at it with the old image. And again, it did, did pretty good. You can see this light gray gradient in the top left corner, and that is gone here. And it looks like it's a very well, um, Taking out the light gray that's from over here and around, it's gone in the other image. So it did, I think it did fantastic. That did very well. All right, so let's tuck the oxygen back over here. 
And let's look at our sulfur data. All right, that data is looking pretty good right there. All right, let's um, run the same script, SETI Astro automatic uh, background extraction. Just go with the default setting again. Let the computer do its thing. It's, it's a pretty quick process here. All right, let's look at the background that it removed. And if you find that this background that was removed is too much for you, you can always go back and use the regular dynamic background extraction or a multitude of other different ways. But I think that's okay. Um, I think it's going to turn out just fine. And there is our new image. And I think it, uh, it did overall pretty well. It did... Uh, Looks good. All right. If you zoom in, I think the sulfur data looks pretty good. It's got some nice little details in there. And this is not stretched. This is just a screen stretch on this data. Um, so overall, I think it did very well. All right. So my next process we're going to do is blur exterminator. So I'll start with the HA. And we'll just do a quick pass of Blur Exterminator at the defaults. Well, there's the default. There we go. Let's just run the defaults on the Blur Exterminator. Let us do its thing. Um, you can adjust the sliders. You can sharpen the stars. You can adjust the non-stellar uh, details. But for now, we're just going to let it go. Um, my laptop... Uh, just got this computer here and my laptop used to take around eight to nine minutes to do this particular uh, um, function so I'm very happy and pleased with this new computer it's really really fast all right so let's do blur exterminator, blur exterminator on the oxygen 3 um, the old computer the laptop it would take I could take a nap literally I'd fall asleep while I was removing the stars, and then now it's about 15 to 20 seconds to remove the stars. Um, it's just it's just that quick. Wow, that image looks really good. All right, so there's the oxygen. And now let's do the sulfur. Now these, uh, this, this whole project was taken over the course of a couple weeks, um, and it, I think it might have stretched into a month and a half. Um, with with clouds and, and just work going on. Um, it, it took a while to get it. So with that being said, normally I would go ahead and take the stars out right now. But since this data was taken over the course of a couple nights, um, the data doesn't line up right on top of each other. It's kind of fuzzy. It doesn't look exactly right. Well, that's because there are some differences in the night where the scope was aligned the right way, tracking was off. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a star alignment. And I'm going to use my HA data as the main view. And then I'm going to come over here and add views. I'm going to add the oxygen and sulfur to the view. And then what we're going to do is it's going to take the star image of the hydrogen alpha and it's going to register all those stars and map them to the O3 and the S2 to it, create new images. And what that's going to do is it's more than likely going to throw the image off some. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. Once it creates these new images, it's, it's, it's going to have some gaps in it, you'll see. And then we'll have to do some cropping. Um, but that's okay. Because, hey, yeah, you can see right here, um, it's just a, a wee bit off to make the images line up. So no big deal. That's quite all right, and it was expected. So I don't need the oxygen anymore from over here. So we'll go ahead and just get rid of that um, so I don't get confused by that data. All right, so we'll do some cropping in a little bit. But let's just put this data back over here for now. All right, so now that we got the star alignment, now we can do the star exterminator. Now we can go ahead and take the stars out of them. So let's run over here, star exterminator. 
and hit the go button and again this process is pretty quick especially with this new computer it takes roughly 15 to 20 seconds and it takes the stars right out um, very impressed with this. this is an alienware aurora 16 um, computer uh, i love it it's a uh, it's a way way better than uh, than my other uh, laptop okay so there's the stars removed from the HA let's do the same uh, for the oxygen now you don't have to use all the stars some people just like to use the hydrogen alpha stars but for this purpose we're gonna combine all the stars together um, I kind of like that idea um, so I'm just learning how to do all that and and I think it comes out pretty well especially if you have RGB stars excuse me um, rather than taking just one of the channel stars you can add them all together and there's a thing called image blend that I'm just learning how to use and it's a pretty cool tool uh, all right so let's test the stars out of that one finally let's get the stars out of the sulfur 2 data and speaking of these scripts um, learn how to use these scripts on astroworld tv uh, astroworldweb.com if you go there uh, there's a thing called astroworld tv they have a show uh, a web show uh, on youtube wednesdays and fridays and they talk about pix insight and how to use these scripts and i've learned so much from the from the uh the individuals over there and on that channel and um it's just amazing so i highly encourage everyone to go over there and at least check them out you'll learn a lot um I have and I'm, I'm learning every day um, some cool stuff all right so now we have that done we should be able to go ahead we could do let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do the crop and do uh, noise exterminator so I don't have to crop the HA uh, I don't want to start with that one because you can see that there there's no issue with that particular framing but now if you go to the s2 and you open this up a little bit now you can see the little area right here where it had to shift the images to make them work so I'll look and see which of these images has the most that needs to be cropped and it's definitely the oxygen data it looks like needs to be cropped the most so we'll go with we'll start off with that one as the main image there's several different ways to do this so just bear with me I just do it how I picked up how I learned how to do it so I'm just gonna bring it in off the corners here a little bit we got a lot of room to spare. There's a lots of lots of room here, so I can crop it in quite a bit. But you don't want to hit the check mark just yet. We want to make sure that everything is cropped the same. So we'll just drag this instance onto here. It's okay if it's irreversible. That's fine. And I just do these one at a time, so I don't get confused on what I'm doing, and that way I know each one has been done. And you got to get the stars as well. Um, each one of the stars has to be cropped to the same so it just all lines up easier and it flows much better there we go so now we have everything cropped and finally last piece we'll crop that one all right so now we can move on to noise exterminator so let's do that let's do an instance of noise exterminator on each one of these and I'm doing them at the defaults. It should only just take a few seconds. But even like right now, the, the data just looks amazing. Uh, lots of good detail here, if, especially for an hour and a half. Um, I would love to have gotten a little bit more. Um, I think maybe maybe next year we will. But you can see this it's real grainy through here. Um, but when you run Noise Exterminator, it does such a great job. It smooths all that. Look at how Look at the difference in how that... That just smoothed it right out. Look at this. We're going to zoom in a little bit. And uh, look in this area right here. See the little granule noise it put there? But now that's the difference of no noise exterminator and with noise exterminator. Just a huge, huge difference. All right, so that's the oxygen. And let's run it off the sulfur data. And then we're almost done there. All right, that's looking really good. That data looks amazing. Look at the detail in there. Sharp, clear. It's 
really nice. All right. So at this point, we did automatic, uh, automatic, auto dynamic background extraction from SETI Astro. We did Blur Exterminator, Star Exterminator, uh, Noise Exterminator, Star Alignment. Now what we can do um, is we can do we could do a linear fit. We can do a bunch of different things. Uh, sometimes I'll go in and I'll just do a small curves adjustment to give it a little bit more. Uh, bring out the dust in the outlying regions just ever so slightly and then bring the bring it down a little bit so then you can keep it there and then you can put the same curves adjustment on each one of your on each one of your uh, channels there so it's all the same all right so didn't really have to do that but that's that's what I did there. All right, so now um, I learned about this new thing. It's not new; it's new to me, but it's this uh, script that's under Utilities, and it's called Forax Palette, and it's really cool. If you got two channels or three channels, you just select which one you have here. So right now we're going to put down we have three channels, and if you don't want to have the stars, you just check this box then all your stars uh, selection goes away. But we want to use the stars. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and you can change these values around. I haven't played with that yet um, to see if it makes different colors, but I'm pretty sure if you just put SH and another H in there, it's going to change up the colors. But uh, just match up with what you got. So the sulfur uh, is, the, is the registered data there. The HA didn't have to be registered. And then the oxygen data... I uh, want to make sure we put the right auction data in there, and then we just put the stars that we want. So we want the S2 stars, want the HA stars, and the O3 stars. And then we're just going to hit the execute button, and this is going to make us up an image. Just bloop. Oh, <laughs> got ahead of myself here. Image didn't come out because failed to do a couple different things getting ahead of myself here all right so real simple we'll just take that away let's rewind a little bit after we did all that we need to stretch these images they're not stretched all right so you can either take away the automatic uh, screen stretch here and then just go over to SETI Astro's statistical stretch this is pretty neat you um, there's a preview window here. You can hit the refresh preview. Um, it'll bring everything up. You can adjust these sliders, but for this particular, uh, we're just going to leave it. But you can really adjust everything in here, and we're just going to hit the execute button. It takes just a second, and there's the stretched image. It looks good. You don't have to take away the, um, uh, the screen stretch there. Um, it works. It disables it for you. So you don't have to worry about doing it. The script is very awesome. Hit the execute button. Takes just a second. There we go. It's stretched. I can't believe I forgot to do that and the stars. Uh, so we'll do those next. Uh, here we go. Look at the preview. I think that, that man, that sulfur looks really good. All right, there we go. Those are stretched. Those look good. Now let's do a... Uh, let's do a star stretch here. So there's our stars. And what we're going to do is go to SETI Astro's star stretch. And we're going to hit show preview. If these were colored, if you have any green bias in there, you could hit the remove green if you want. Um, make sure you are selected the right one. You got the right one showing here. I just, I go with what's on there. Sometimes I will reduce it down. And then you can hit your refresh button and see how it drops the stars. Normally, before I did this, I was putting it in curves and dragging the dragging the, uh, the the adjuster down so it would darken the stars or it would take away the light. Um, this is way much better um, if you just leave this at its normal um, at its normal value, and you can see how dim they are here, and then magically they just. It's just like magic. This is this is one of the best scripts I've ever seen here. It's awesome. 
All right, so there's the S2 stars. Let's do the O3 stars. These are much, much brighter. Um, so if you didn't like the brightness, you could always just adjust and uh, turn down the brightness. But I like it. We're going to leave it where it is with the default value of 5. And let's do the HA stars. I always like to turn off the screen stretch just so I can see what's going on. Show the preview. I like it. Execute. There we go. So now everything is stretched. Everything's ready to go. Now let's go back to utilities, 4X palette utility. We do have three channels. And we'll put the S2 data in there. Put the HA data in there. The O3 data. And the stars. So the S2 stars, HA stars, and now the O3 stars. Hit the execute. Now it's going to make us up an automatic 4X picture with stars. So we got the 4X stars right here. We're going to put them right there. This is the new 4X image. And I'm still learning here. It, it created an HO image and an oxygen image. And I'm not, I'm not sure why. Um, I guess you could use it for a mask. Um, haven't figured that part out yet, but that's later on. Learn something else. All right, so now we have the 4X image. And it's stretched. We can do a multitude of things to it. Um, we could put it in um, color calibration here. And you could change the colors. You could recalibrate it to how you, how you like it. Um, but we're not going to do too much here. We can take away some of the green if we want. So we'll do just a little bit of that. Let's just go with that. And then um, everything else looks good. We could boost up the oxygen, as you see there. But I don't want to go too crazy. We're just doing a little bit of tutorial work here. I think that's that's pretty good there. We'll, we'll let it go with that. Okay. So that looks good there. And then what we could do is we could come over here in the curve section. And let's see. We could hit it with just a small amount of chrominance here. And you can see how it really, really adds in the color. Just really oversaturates it. Or you can take it out. Put it to where your liking is. But what I really wanted to do is I like doing this. And I think I picked this up from Luco Medico. Uh, let's see here. If, oh, wrong here. We'll take this red mask. Drop it on here. All right. So then what we're going to do is just take this mask blur. And if I'm not mistaken, I think these, these uh, scripts here came from... Bill Blanchin, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I got them off Luke's uh, tutorial. Um, but I like to use them because they're real quick and easy. But for this, um, I want to target some of these areas and make them go from red. I like to boost up the red a little bit in these areas. And you can see the red coming up. So don't overdo it, but put at least one shot of red in there. And I'll reset it. And I'll put one more small shot of red. Then I'm going to follow it up with some green. And when I get around to where the, the arc is, <clears throat> excuse me, I look at the screen and I notice I go from red to a little bit of orangey, fiery gold. And if you pass up just a little higher, you'll get the same. So I try to match it just either on it or just a little over it. And I'll just drag that green right down. And you'll see the transition between in these areas and the finer detail area along the edges changes from all red, from brown, not brown, but from orange, fiery gold. You can manipulate that. So get it right where you want it and then put an instance in there and hit it again. And then 
reset your values and then if you like that then just roll with it so that's just a little demonstration of how i get those little areas to change colors to to get them to go from uh all one color to a different color so let's get rid of that mask and let's do let's just leave it for let's leave it there for now and then i'm going to take this curves adjustment here and oh forgot to show the preview window there let's give it just a little bit of boost there and let's tone it down just a little bit make a little bit more of a dynamic range makes it look more 3d almost but it's really what what your liking is okay i think that's good right there of course you can play with it all day long and put it however you want it but that's just a base image just something to work off of for this 4x okay so now that's the 4x of course there's the 4x stars don't really need to do anything with that but what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to the script utilities image blend and this is something new that i'm still trying to learn uh from uh person who really knows a lot about this is uh, Super Dave. Uh, he's on uh, Astro World um, TV on the YouTube, and um, he knows this, and is, he's just a, a whiz uh, at doing this, and I'm still trying to learn it. So um, basically, you take your image, and we have the 4X image, and normally, this thing may start up in this down here with the... Uh, where it's got um, the replace selected. I forget where it's at. I don't see it up here. Oh, there it is. Normally it has this replace down here. So then you put your normal image up here, your first image, and then you can adjust the midtones. You can adjust it however you like. Play around with it. You can adjust the black point. But let's kind of put it back where we had it all right something similar to what we had but what you do is you take the 4x stars you put in here and then oops now it's just stars but that's because it's didn't replace so what we're going to do is we're going to go to screen and now it screens the stars in and where i used to have to take and use the pixel math or luke's um screen for starless and rescreen this kind of works the same way, but you have more control over your stars in this image. You can take the opacity down, and you can see you know, the stars don't overtake the image anymore. And then, let's say you really wanted the stars in there, you can even bring down the midtones and really make those stars be really punchy. And if you got RGB stars, it makes a whole lot of difference. So that's just a small little demonstration of what you could do there and i'm still learning this and there's another way to take excuse me there's another way to take that other image that came out let's say you wanted to use uh, a map uh, make a uh, a map of this um, a mask of this um, but you already had it like that other image it created you could take it and put it on top of this image and go to like a high pass and somehow adjust it to where it makes these little edges come out and it just increases your contrast of the image. I don't know how to do that just yet. So still working on that one. So we'll put the 4X stars back there and let's see, take off the high pass and put none. All right, so there's an image. So we hit the green check mark and basically there's an image for us right there. Um, it's not an award-winning photo by any means, but it's an image that you can mess around with and, and do as you please. So let's take that image, move it over to here, and then you can also take the LRGB combination. Um, and I'm still learning on how to do this. Some people do take the uh, hydrogen and put it in here as well for luminance. I, I didn't do a luminance channel. Um, but for right now, we're going to uh, uncheck it because we're not going to use it. So we're going to take an RGB and this SHO. So I believe it's uh, S, H, and O. So we'll put the S here. So we'll put the S2 data here. Uh, S and then H for the green. So there's the hydrogen there. 
And then, of course, oxygen. And oxygen registered. Okay. And then we're going to hit the go button. And it should produce us an image, but it's not going to be an image that's like really high, um, high contrasted, lots of colorful images. Um, like the 4X image that came up, it, you know, had lots and lots of punchy, punchy colors where this one has, it's a good start. So then we'll take this and bring it over into uh, calibration. So we'll go to narrowband calibration. We're in SHO here. First of all, let's put the preview window up. So you can you can preserve it. it each one of these, just play with the settings. It changes. I sometimes just leave it off. Uh, I'll run the SCNR up a little bit to get rid of some of that green. And then you can boost the oxygen up, but you don't want it to overtake the image. There's enough oxygen in there already. That was a I didn't do a linear fit on these images, and there's a lot there. So um, you can you can do a lots of adjustments here. So anyway, you can do that. And so now we have this image here. You can do the same by putting the mask on these images, right? And we can go through that whole process of adjusting it here and there. Or you can get this image tuned up to really what you want. And then um, you can take this image, put it into image blend, and take the 4X image, which we have, and take the image 187 image, screen the two together, and now you've combined those two together, and then of course you can adjust how the one image looks over the other to give you a different view, different contrasty look, and then of course you can adjust the opacity um, to where it's basically not there, and then it's there. It's a little subtle changes. But let's just say we're going to leave it at that. We left it there. So that image is now image blend 2. And then if you wanted to put the stars in, you could just go back to image blend again. And we'll take the image blend 2 uh, image and the 4x stars and there we go now we have the 4x stars with all of those individual images blended together and it's just a quick quick show on, on that and that's that's a, just a quick rundown on how that uh, image blend script works and the SETI Astro scripts I'm not by any means uh, well versed in these scripts but they do work very well and as you can see this is really quick and now we've got a lot of color, a lot of punchiness here. And we'll finally take it over here, do some dark structure enhance, and make these individual limbs of the nebula stick out even more. And then we can zoom in here, sorry. And you see the difference here when we take it off. It kind of takes this, it makes it a little gray, and then it makes it darker. I think it just adds that little bit extra to it. So. There's that, and you can bring it over to Curves if you find out that that's a good image for you and you like it, but it's not bright enough. You can just juice it up a little bit with some Curves. And then you can take out some saturation or chrominance. If it's too much on your eyes, you can just adjust it however you want. And that is the Lagoon Nebula. This is not my finished image. This is just a quick way of showing you some different tools to demonstrate this. But while I have you here, and just before I show you the final image, I was talking about Astro World uh, TV, AstroWorldWeb.com earlier. Let me show you if I can get this right. Um, we should now be looking at um, astroworldweb.com and basically everybody should be going to this website and checking out this tab right here well first of all check out astro world telescopes because dan he will get you anything you need over there uh, he's a great guy a great 
just a great experience. Um, I just recently bought uh, a new Player One uh, Saturn SQR or SQC camera, a planetary camera. I just love it. And I used it for some solar work, and it's working out very well, very high frame rate. Um, it's, it's awesome. I love it. Love it. Go over here and at least check out the Images tab, Images of the Week contest. What this does is anybody can go in here and submit their image to get voted on. And as you can see here, lots of prizes for voting on images here. And um, uh, people just go in here, submit their image, um, and there are some rules. And basically it's right here. The biggest ones are maximum resolution of 72 inches uh, for pixel size. Image size is 1200 by 800, and then it has to be in a WEBP format. I didn't even know what that was when I first started, but um, you can change it over in PixInsight, Adobe Photoshop, a couple of different places you can change that over uh, to. All you gotta do is go over here, click this button, submit your entry, and there's two brackets. This is pretty cool. Experienced, so if you're experienced, just double click in the experienced bracket and drop your image and a text file of what it is uh, into this folder. If you're a novice, click it and drop it in a novice folder, and you're done. And then that's that's it. Basically, um, the shows are Monday and I mean uh, Wednesdays and Fridays at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, and then I believe every Saturday morning the uh, it opens up to insert your image into there um, I think it says it right here so I don't misquote myself but um, yep submissions open up every Saturday at 8 and then it goes to I think 7 a.m. or something like that on Tuesday morning voting starts on Wednesday and then it's open until 9:30 uh, during the show on Friday and then they announce live on the show who won image of the week and if you win image of the week you get put into uh, image of the month and then you can go back in here to image of the month contest and, and, and go here to vote as well. Uh, you'll just go down here and when it's open to vote, you find the image that you like and you vote for it. Image of the week contest is the same at the very bottom. When it's open, there's a button down here to vote. Um, so I highly encourage everyone to go and at least check out uh, astroworldweb.com. Uh, stop by and see Astral World Telescopes, um, and um, uh, Dan will definitely do you good, and uh, uh, tell him Wilfredo sent you. And um, listen, I really appreciate you hanging out with me um, this afternoon and evening uh, while we did this uh, uh, M8 Lagoon Nebula. Just hang out for one more second, and I'll get you the final image coming up. I really appreciate each and every one of you, and um, there will be some links to all of this stuff in the description. 